Good evening, and welcome to the celebration of the liturgy with Our Lady Undura of Nas Parish. Today is the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are a parish of the Catholic Apostolic Church in North America, or Casina, as we are known. Our vision is to rebuild Christ's church by seeking out and providing an accepting, accommodating, and aspirational spiritual home for disenchanted, disengaged, and disaffected Catholics and others. We welcome everyone. Let us take a moment now to pause, be silent, and place ourselves in the presence of God. <clears throat> Our celebrant this evening is our pastor, Al Ristorfer. Please stand and join in our opening hymn, number 744, Gather Us In, number 744. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, the Father of mercy, through the death and resurrection of the Son, has reconciled the world to himself and sent forth the Holy Spirit among us with the forgiveness of sin. Through the ministry of the church, may God grant you all pardon and peace. And I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
right. Strong is your justice, and great is your mercy. Protect us in the burdens and challenges of life. Shield our minds from the distortion of pride, and enfold our desires with the beauty of truth. Help us to become more aware of your loving design, so that we may more willingly give our lives in service to all. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her, and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding, and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care, because she goes about seeking those worthy of her. And she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. Our response tonight is, My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means proceed those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, 
with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air so that we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. We're waiting for Jared to come around the corner. Maybe it's one post on the first. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, hello again. <clears throat> Thanks for coming. Thanks for all of you out there on internet land who are tuning in. 
Hopefully this week the technology is working. Hopefully. Seems like it. Um, as I said a little while ago, after today, we only have two more Sundays in the liturgical year. And three Sundays from now will be the first Sunday in Advent, when we will start a new year in the church as we build to the joyous birth of the Savior on Christmas. But in Matthew's Gospel, we're not heading to the birth of the Christ child, but to his death. In the very next chapter, in fact, chapter 26, we read of the Last Supper, and then on to the betrayal in the garden and the passion and the death of the Lord. And as we just read in today's Gospel, the words of Jesus have become to turn very dark with warnings, dark things to come, end times, death, and judgment. You know, Francis of Assisi may have called it Sister Death, as if death was something we joyfully played with as kids. <laughs> but for most of us, death is so frightful, so final, and consequently, so, as to maintain our sanity, so forgettable. It hardly feels like our system. And what's on the other side of death also has these same characteristics of frightfulness, finality, and a need and a want to just forget about it. We don't have to think of these things. I don't want to preach about these things. We don't want to think about facing judgment, especially from an infinitely just and perfect God. And given that we're not a fire and brimstone kind of a church, we don't talk much about being sentenced to live for all eternity in a state of horrible, hopeless hell. In spite of its actual possibility, we instead focus on all we've been told about God's boundless mercy, even to the point sometimes of being presumptuous about our salvation. But Matthew, and to some extent the other evangelists, they're just not this polyanthropic. They're not this arrogant. When the chapters in this gospel, from chapter 3 to today's chapter 25, are often referred to as the judgment discourse. And in given that these are the last instructive pieces from Christ before he dies, they take on a kind of added significance as essentially his dying words to us. Jesus is imparting something important before dying. Perhaps the most important wisdom that he could possibly provide us. Now, although these chapters deal with something called eschatology, the end times, and the parousia is a word in Greek that means the second coming of Christ, two other topics we don't seem to discuss very much, even though we profess our belief in them every time we say the creed, we don't talk much about. These chapters are comprised of a series of parables, nonetheless, that address the coming of the kingdom and ultimately our own deaths, and our preparedness or lack thereof for entering into the kingdom of heaven. Today's parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids emphasizes the importance of being prepared for Christ's coming. It parallels the wedding feast story that we heard a few Sundays ago when one of the guests showed up unprepared, without a proper wedding garment. And we know what happened to him. He got thrown out. And like the foolish, unprepared versions of the day story, they find themselves locked out. I mean, on the next two Sundays, you're going to hear more about readiness for being with Christ. Next week tells the parable of the talents and emphasizes the importance of being found 
by Christ at his coming to have been faithful over that which he has entrusted us. And Sunday after that, the last one of the year, is about the judgment of those who did not see Christ and those who are most needy. Lord, when we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you, and Christ replied in that gospel is, I tell you the truth, when you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you are refusing help to me. Emphasizing the importance of being found by Christ at his coming to have been generous to the most needy among us. Matthew talks a lot about judgment, more so than any of the other Gospels. And he also says that in this age we can't seem to discern the blessing from the dead, but that in God's, in the end of, the, the end of it all, God's judgment sorts it out. He sorts us out. I mean, don't forget the wheat grows alongside the weeds. The bad fish and the good fish alike make their way into the net. The sheep enter the herd along with the goats. The unprepared, disrespectful guests enter the wedding feast along with the prepared and respectful guests. The foolish virgins who fail to bring the oil remain in the party as long with those who had enough oil. God, however, sorts them out in his own good time. Matthew talks a lot about judgment. Those prepared and worthy enter his embrace. Those unworthy do not. And it's very final. The door is shut. And there's no coming back at that. So today's lesson, as well as the stories in the next two Sunday's Gospels, all have one core, clear point. Prepare now while you have time. And that's incredibly discomforting to hear. But it's clear, and it's fully disclosed to us as what God expects and what his standards are. The need to prepare is why we have our lives. Our lives are the time we have to transform. Transform to what? To the temple created by the Holy Spirit to become inheritors of God's kingdom. To realize our full potential to be other Christ to the world. And the guidebook, the instruction manual on how to do that is all perfectly laid out in the gospel that we preach and we hear every Sunday. And our personal trainer in this journey is Jesus. He's on call 247 from the prayer. And the courage and strength needed to transform, well, that's found in the sacraments, most especially the Eucharist. And the support and encouragement we rely on is in our community of our teammates we call the church, both those we honored last Sunday who are in heaven in the communion of saints and those, all of us here, who are still on this earth. So we're left with many reasons. But it is still indeed challenging and scary, and that's why Paul can testify we should not worthy or grieve like the rest who have no hope. We have hope. We have faith. And we have time to prepare. So that, as Paul says, we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then, that's those who have gone before us. And thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Now is the time to make sure we have plenty of oil in our lamps to light the way so that we can meet the Lord when he comes. When will he come for us? We don't know the hour. And so therefore we are wise indeed to not delay our preparations. I also have a recommendation. A recommendation.
recommendation for keeping the ultimate end game in the forefront of your minds. Many of you know Father Peter Smith. Several years ago, he gave a sermon in which he recommended an app An app that provides amazing focus. You know what it's called? It's called We Croak. <laughs> True. We Croak. <laughs> I install it. And it's subtle. But it has a punch. It's powerful. Every day, it sends you a quote from somebody famous about death about the end times, about the finality of all of us. Lots of people had lots of stuff to say about it, because I've been on this app now for like four years, and every day I get a new quote from somebody that says something that just hits me. I mean, you may think it's a little more, but it's not. Instead, it just gets you so grounded and determined I mean, if you ever were with someone who's dealing with a terminal disease, terminal with it, 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 it illness, and see how single-minded they are, how their priorities are so crystal clear, you'll get the idea. Every day reminds me that death is inevitable. My death is inevitable. Every day. Every day provides me a context for framing how to make this day count as I prepare for the end of my life. I mean, we all, in the end, have a terminal disease. We will die. So, we all must develop this keen awareness of Jesus' inevitable return in our lives, regardless of how delayed the bridegroom may be. Now is the time. Now is the chance to repent and to reform. Now is when we must answer the call to live lives of grace. The bridegroom most assuredly comes. So let us prepare ourselves with all haste. And to quote St. Paul just one more time, therefore, consult one another with these words. So may the Lord, who comes for each of us, bless all of you as you prepare to meet you. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all the sin of the sea. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God of the Father, God from God, God of the Almighty, true God of the Father, begotten and nominated, one and the of the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, that the Father and the Son of is worshipped and glorified, and that is open to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge the baptism and the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To 
God, whose giving knows no ending, let us bring our needs in confidence. For us, the living church, that we may be a sacrament of Christ's love in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For peace in the world and in every human heart, for peace and unity and an end to division in our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that we may be that we may help to prepare the world for Christ's coming for our loving service of God and of neighbor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our beloved dead and the deceased parishioners and benefactors of our Casina community, especially Russ Bono, for whom we have dedicated this Mass, that they may rejoice forever in God's sight. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic that is ravaging our world, for the scientists and doctors working on cures and treatments, and for healthcare workers and first responders, that they may be protected as they serve our communities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We offer up a prayer of gratitude for all those who have heard the call to support our parish and our mission with their time, talent, and treasure. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us take a moment as we offer up all of the prayers we hold in our hearts and for all those petitions to Our Lady of Doer of Knots that we have received on the website, especially for Father Michael Dakota and Father Joe Reynolds, for Bob and for Chris Emery's mother, and for Kathleen's son, Brian. For all of these prayers, spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. 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 Hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, teach us to be generous. Teach us to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the cost. To toil and not to ask for rest. To labor and not to seek reward. Save that of knowing that we are doing your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us offer each other a big fat wave of peace. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, 
It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed is God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my name and cleanse me. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord is the sacrifice that your hands for the praise of the Lord and God's name, our and the of all the church. God of mercy, in this Eucharist we proclaim the death of the Lord. Accept the gifts we present and help us follow him with love, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. All things are of your making. All times and seasons obey your laws. But you choose to create us in your arm, your own image. You set us over the whole world in all of its wonder. You made us the stewards of creation to praise you day by day for the marvels of your wisdom and power through Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you, Lord, with all the angels in their song of joy. When supper was ended, he took the cup. And he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of the
glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit, and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you, and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints. With Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the Apostles, the Martyrs, with St. Dorothy Day, whose feast birthday is today, and all your saints, whose constant intercession we rely on. Lord, may this sacrifice, which has made our peace with you, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servants, Ron and Anthony, our bishops, Francis, the Bishop of Rome, and all the patriarchs, and all the bishops of all the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family of Gab here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children wherever they may be. Remember my father-in-law, Russell. In baptism, he died with Christ. May he also share his resurrection, when Christ will raise our mortal bodies and make them like his own in glory. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. There we hope to share in your glory, when every tear will be wiped away. On that day, we shall see you, our God, as you are. We shall become like you and praise you forever through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him with and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father.
This is Jesus, the bridegroom, who one day will come for us all. Happy are we now called to this song. Lord, I am not proud of his truth, but only say the word. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the nourishment you give us through your holy name. Pour out your spirit among upon us, and in the strength of this food from heaven, keep us single-minded in your service. We ask this in the name of Jesus.
Let us bring our cares and concerns to our Lord. Mother Mary, you have never refused to help any of your children in need. You have never stopped working for our welfare and our need. The loving mercy and kindness that exists in your back of heart, cast your compassionate eyes on me and see the sorrowful knocks that exist in my life. Dear Mother, you know the difficulty, sorrow, and pain that I've had because of it. I place the rhythm of my life in these thoughts into your loving hands because you can only do it in the most difficult ones. Most Holy Mother, I know my aid and receive for you, Lord God, and God your prayers. I cast these knots into your hands, and they you to undo them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the glory of God, once and for all. Our Lady, of your knots. Pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of God in Jesus. Holy Mary, Lord of God, pray for us sinners, now and for our death. Pray to you, O Charity.